travel agent. Hi, I'm Gert Boyle, chairman of Columbia Sportswear, my son Tim, our president, to demonstrate our interchange system. The liner zips in for maximum warmth. The outer shell is weatherproof. Best of all, it comes in dozens of styles. I voted against that. The Columbia Interchange System. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Altenburg, Germany, for the first World Cup luge competition of 1992. A bit of bad luck for the USA team has turned into good luck for winter speed because with me I have Erica Terwilliger who would normally be sliding in this event but because of an injured thumb she's on the sideline and able to join our commentary. Erica, I'm sure as a member of the 88 team and a hopeful for this year's Olympics uh, you'd like to get back on the ice as soon as possible. When will you be able to do that? Uh, hopefully within two weeks after the operation the doctor had said four weeks if there's no complications but I'm a little antsy to get back on so I'm, I'm hoping by Koenigsegg which is next week I can start sliding again. And the World Cup is doubly important this year? Yeah, well, we have a chance to pre-qualify. If you place top six in either event, uh, or any of the four World Cups, you pre-qualify for the Olympics. And also, the placings also help toward acquiring seeds during the Olympics, which is very important, because getting a good seed could be, you know, the difference between first and tenth place. We have excellent conditions here in Altenburg, and this is one of the fastest tracks on the circuit, so it should be a great race in the men's competition coming up later in the program. The women's singles has been completed, and we're going to show you some highlights of the second heat. Erica, did the first heat go pretty much the, the way you expected? Yeah, we have uh, Susie Erdmann of Germany in first place, and we have Jana Boda, also of Germany, in second place. Um, I think that was to be expected. Both of these girls have had a lot of runs on this track, and they're very solid sliders. Um, and in third place, we have Cammie Myler, who had an exceptional run. Um, Cammie's looking really, really good on a sled this year. And then in fourth place, we have Andrea Togworker, which was actually quite a surprise, I thought. She, uh, she, I don't think she was faring too well in training, but she really, really had a nice run. Her first one was great. And if she can, both her and Cammie, if they can have a solid second run, I think it's going to make for an extremely good race. Okay, well, let's have a look at the action of the second heat. The rules for this competition are simple. Each competitor has two runs. The fastest combined time for both runs wins. After the first heat, the top three are Susie Erdmann and Jana Boda, both of Germany, closely followed by Cami Myler of the USA. Your commentator is John Morgan. Now on course for the United States, it's 29-year-old Bonnie Warner, two-time Olympian from Mount Baldy, California. 14th place into the first heat. Good story on Bonnie. She's now a flight engineer for United Airlines. Now approaching the bottom part of the course. Time to beat in this heat so far on the left. She's got that. It's very close. 14 or 500ths of a second lead so far. Let's see her in the finish corner. Bonnie Warner, the two-time Olympian. Hoping to improve on the 14th place. And her finish time, 44.35. Good enough for first place overall. Bonnie's now going to go in and weigh her sled, which is common practice here in the Sport of Luge. Now up to the top, the Soviet Union, Irina Kubanka. Here's her replay as she pushes off. A very important to start in luge as it is in bobsledding. Here she is at a curve nine, not a long straightaway into the Chrysler corner. She's got a 200s lead now on Bonnie Warner. Very close between Warner and the next three places. Now at a curve 10, the Chrysler into a tricky serpentine corner combination of the bottom part of this course. 13, 14, quick left, quick right. Now we'll get a speed trap and time indication here. Oh, she's now got a 600 lead, so she's uh, widening her lead out over the United States and Bonnie Warner. Here comes the Soviet Union. They aren't as powerful as they used to be. They lost their coach, Edwin Gerspon, who's a Latvian, and that's going to affect their presence, but she's in first place overall now. She's ahead of Bonnie Warner. Irina Kubenka of the Soviet Union. She'll also go in away her sled. Now on track, the Canadian Kathy Salmon, 23 years old from Calgary. She's at a curve nine to the long straightaway. She's got 12 hundredths here. She's in 12th place at the end of the first heat. And she's got a few hundredths lead on the Soviet slider who just came down in front of her. 
Kathy Salmon, the Canadian's best hope, going into the Alberville Water Olympic Games. Lives in Calgary, takes advantage of that fine track that's out there in Calgary. Her brother Sam Salmon also slides for the Canadian team. Here she goes into the finish corner. Her time, 44.25 plus eight, but moves her back down one slot. Irina Kubinkia goes ahead of her, but it's good enough for second overall. It's Kubinka of the Soviet Union. Pete's still to come. It's Irina Kubkina of the USSR leading Kathy Salmon of Canada and the USA's Bonnie Warner. When we come back, we'll have Aaron Warren of the USA. Stay with us on Winter Speed. Every Wednesday night, Nesson is your ticket to the great outdoors with two hours of exciting and entertaining programs and the tradition of the American sportsman. At 5 o'clock, it's a half hour of angling action on good fishing. Oh, I love fighting. Ah, yeah. Water Sports Weekly is next with everything from water skiing to bow fishing. Ooh, yeah. Got him, man. Head north of the border at 6 and join a Tyler LeBignan and Henry Warcheck for Canadian sports fishing. Look at what that. A oh, oh, oh. What a monster. <laughs> and at 6.30, the American frontier is yours on Fishing the West. Look at that guy. Beautiful. So make Wednesday your night to get back to nature with good fishing at 5, followed by water sports weekly at 5.30. Canadian sports fishing at 6, and Fishing the West at 6.30 on Nesson. Your ticket to the great outdoors. Action. More action. Action. Reaction. NBA action. Catch up on the NBA Tuesday at 7 on Nest. Welcome back to Altenburg, Germany, and Winter Speed's coverage of the first World Cup luge event for 1992. Next up in the women's singles, we have Erin Warren of the USA. Erica, Erin's your teammate. What did you think of her first heat? Uh, I thought she had a very nice run. I think Erin can be really happy with that. It was a good, solid run. It's Erin's first year as a senior. She's been traveling with junior, senior team last year, and I think that was quite hard. And she also had to learn a lot of new tracks last year. But I think she can be very happy with that run. It was a good, solid run. Okay, a lot of pressure on a young competitor. Let's have a look at Erin Warren's second heat. Again, your commentator is John Morgan. Now on course for the United States, it's the 19-year-old Erin Warren from Somerville, Massachusetts. Sixth place at the end of the first heat. Her start time right there. She's had the best start time so far. So a very promising slider for the United States. 19 years old to be in a sixth place spot on a track like Altenburg speaks for itself. Out of the big Chrysler corner, now down into the snake part of the course. Speed trap there. She's seven hundredths ahead now out of the 13, 14 corner combination. Let's look for her time. Oh, she's off her sled and over. Erin Warren of the United States. If she doesn't stay with a sled, she'll be disqualified. And there goes the sled, which means she will not finish. There goes the USA team trainer, Lee Lundgren, down to see if she's okay. Aaron Warren, 19 years old, sixth place into the first heat. Maybe the pressure got to her. She's got a great chance of making the USA Olympic team, great chance of becoming the USA number two slider, but maybe the pressure here, one of the toughest tracks in the world, got to her. Here's her mistake. Out of curve 14, hits the left hand wall. Look at her right foot. A lot of pressure on the Koopmans there to try and turn her away. Oh, this is where the lights go out for her. Well, that was a bit of bad luck for Erin. How do you think that'll affect her confidence for the rest of the, uh, the tour? I don't think it will. I mean, I think she's probably put this race behind her already, and she's looking forward to Koenigsegg in the next race. So that leaves only Cami Myler with a chance of a place for the USA. Let's go back to the action with Austria's Andrea Tagwerker in the starting gate. Here's the Austrian Tywaker, third place into the first heat. Pretty strong starter, and... The Austrians weren't expected to do well this year, but they've come here, and the secret, they say, is they hired the former East German coach Klaus Bonsack to their coaching staff over the summer, and he's a guy that won medals in the 64, 68, and 72 Olympic Games. He's got four Olympic medals, and that's probably why the Austrians are doing so well here. There she is out of Kreisel. Now down near where Aaron Warren of the United States had her problems, right out of this corner here. Let's see how the Austrian does. Very straight and smooth. She's 1,300s behind in this heat, second overall, but she's got a little bit of bumper room. 
to maintain her placing. Let's see. Into the finish, second best time of the heat. Her overall time, though, leaves her in first place. So the Austrians guaranteed at least a medal here in the first World Cup event of the year. Andrea Tywecker of Austria. Now up at the top of the track for the United States, it's Cammie Myler. She needs a good start. She's in second place going into this second and final heat of the competition. A Dartmouth College student who's taking time off for the U.S. loose team, and she just posted the fastest start so far. Here she is out of curve nine, not a long straightaway that goes into the big whip around the 360-degree Kreisel corner, and that's a minus three-hundredths of a second over the best time so far, so she's got a great heat going here. The United States' Cammie Myler trying to put herself in a great position to win a medal here at the first World Cup of the year. Down here where Aaron Warren got in trouble, Myler straight, and she's got an 18 hundredths of a second lead. Cammie Myler charging to the finish. Let's watch for her split times. Her time, the fastest time of the heat so far, and it puts her at top of the leaderboard. So the United States' Cammie Myler of Lake Placid is guaranteed at least a silver medal here in the first World Cup of the year. Well, as I mentioned, Myler's guaranteed a at least a silver medal, but here's the person that could win the gold, the favorite this event, Susie Erdmann of Germany, the present world champion in the sport of women's luge, and this is her home track, and look at her come down that straightaway, out of the curve nine into the Kreisel, she's got a 300th lead right now, and her and Myler are separated only by a couple hundredths of a second, so the bottom part of the course is going to determine whether the U.S. gets the gold or the silver. Susie Erdmann now with a 500th lead. Out of curve, 13 and 14, the next speed trap. Let's watch for the times. Six hundredths of a lead, the best time so far in the heat. Susie Erdmann of Germany into the finish. Only a mistake could take the gold away. Her time, the best overall in this heat and the best overall in both. Susie Erdmann, who sets the track record in the first heat and maintains it in the second heat. Here she is with a very powerful start. The start is crucial in this sport as it is in bobsledding. But look at her lines here out of curve nine. Look at her heads back. Look how straight the sled's coming. There's our gold medalist in this first World Cup luge event of the year. It's Susie Erdmann in first, Cammie Maller in second, and the Austrians in third place. Well, what a great result for Cammie Maller, second in the first race of the season and not that far behind the champion, Susie Erdmann. Yeah, Cammie put in a great race. I mean, she had two solid runs back to back. Um, I think it was probably in the back of her mind about pre-qualifying for the Olympics, but she's done it now, and, you know, she can look forward to probably having a very great season. Again, a fantastic result. Let's hear what Cammie had to say about it. Um, well, both my runs were pretty consistent, actually. The track was really nice today. We haven't really had any fast ice in training, so it was a little different, but not a problem. How do you rate this track uh, compared to some of the others in Europe? Um, I actually really like this one. I think it's one of my favorites. We were here for the first time last year but I seem to do pretty well, so I like it. Right, and this is uh, Susie's home track. Um, you got fairly close to it. Well, I beat her here last year on this track, and I beat her in Lake Placid, too, so I definitely think there's some hope for the Olympics. Canada's Kathy Salmon and Bonnie Warner of the USA also boosted their hopes for the Olympics by joining Cami in the top 15 finishers. Once again, congratulations to Camille Marlow. When we come back on Winter Speed, we'll have the men's singles from here in Altenburg, Germany.